What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. Happy Christmas to everybody. It is Christmas morning and we do have a present of Cristiano Ronaldo. Phenomenal finishing. He's got the big time, show time, whatever you want to call him. He is a beastly card. Now we're going to show you how to train him up. We're also going to show you how to train Kante and Koulibaly. Goalkeeper looked terrible in that clip there. But anyway, we will get on with that in just a second, right? These are the Showtime player cards. They've all got boosters, as I said, which is going to give them a plus two to multiple stats. Koulibaly turned his arse to it, clears it with the header there as well. I think Kante is probably the pick of them. Like, Ronaldo is a beast, right? This is actually a really good Ronaldo card, which we'll get into in a second. But yeah, let me know if you guys are going to spin for these. We will hopefully be streaming a little bit later on today. And if not, we will have a video up where we will try and spin. I think Kante, apart from him being a little bit short compared to the likes of Vieira and stuff, which just, you know, they have just such long legs for winning the ball. I think Kante is going to be an absolute pest, especially if you use this build that I'm going to show you because he looks to be a monster across the board, right? So I would say the first thing that we're going to talk about, right, is the fact that these are all getting a booster, right? So we had that little video there. We also have our free daily game, which we can spin and see if we get the other version of Ronaldo. But this version of Ronaldo is really, really nice, right? He's got phenomenal finishing. And we're going to focus on the GOAT card of Ronaldo in a little bit of a different time because this is not it, right? I think there will be a different version of Ronaldo's GOAT card coming. This is current day Ronaldo card. It's just a booster card, which has plus two to shooting, right? So plus two increases to ball control, finishing, kick and power, phys physical contact. It's not the end game Ronaldo card, right? But it's still a very, very nice card depending on how you train it up. And if you've never had a really good Ronaldo card, I'm kind of torn with her to spin because I have the Manchester United club pack, which is an unbelievable card. And this one does compare very nicely to that. He's got the phenomenal finishing. He's got one touch pass. He's got first time shot, acrobatic finishing, heading, long range shooting. And he's just basically able to score. If you can get the ball into Ronaldo's feet in the box, he's still one of the most deadliest strikers in the game. It's just built in, man. It's not just about stats. It's about his physical presence. It's about his mixture of variety of stats, such as his physical contact and then his finishing, his ball control, his acceleration. He has the whole package, right? So I think the biggest thing with Ronaldo is getting his attack and awareness up as high as possible, which is why we've gone for this build here. So this is the build that we've gone for. We've gone four into shooting. We've gone six into dribbling, 13 into dexterity, six into lower body and six into aerial strength and finishing off with four into goalkeeper one. Now look at the stats with the manager boost, right? We're going to be getting the boost to offensive awareness, finishing. We're also going to be getting the boost to acceleration, kick and power, and jump. All of those stats that I just called out are going to be 90 plus, right? Which is insane. You're going to have a brilliant finisher that is going to have 90 plus finishing or 90 finishing, depending on his form arrow. You're also going to have his offensive awareness, which is ridiculously high for a player like this, especially an older player that has still got 88 acceleration. It's very rare that you have a player that's taller than 180 that will be able to have acceleration. Unless, you know, acceleration and offensive awareness and finishing above 90 or around that 90 mark. Now you throw in that he's going to have 90 jump, and also physical contact is going to be over 80, like what, 85 with the booster. It is a really nice card, right? It's not a GOAT level Ronaldo card. It's not end game level Ronaldo card. But I definitely feel it just depends whether the phenomenal finishing is, you know, I think it's more placebo than anything, to be honest with you. That's not why I'd be getting it. I wouldn't be like, oh, it's a phenomenal finisher card. I would be getting it because it's a really, really, really decent Cristiano Ronaldo card. And until we get, or unless we get a GOAT version of the, of the card, which might never happen, uh, I think it is a really, really good card. I mean, obviously, when you're looking at player skills, it depends on how you play. I mean, double touch will always be nice in Ronaldo if you play him a lot of dribbling. I wouldn't recommend dribbling with Ronaldo. It's more kind of a get the ball in the box. Use him as a mobile running gun target man, you know, kind of 60, 70% target man um, and then 30% kind of run and gun. You can do a boat with him because he has one touch pass and he's got 90 acceleration, um, but his balance is slightly down to, to do that, right? Next up, we do have Koulibaly uh, or Kante. We'll do Kante, let's, because they're probably two of the biggest players. We'll get straight to the point. Kante's got box-to-box -box play style, which means that he's going to be covering every blade of grass. And also his standard form isn't really an issue with the way that they've changed that now as well, right? Dueling plus two, he's got double touch, he's got one touch pass, true passing, way to pass. He's also got man marking interception. So it goes without saying that he needs to have blocker. If you want him to be used as a defensive box-to-box -box player, I would definitely do that. Now, um, that is probably where I would play Kante. If you have Kante and Vieira in midfield, I mean, you're just going to have every which option 
uh, stopping, you know, around a, around a pitch, right? Your opponents won't know what to do. Very, very strong card. His speed and stamina uh, and defensive awareness and tackling stats all get the booster with the max booster. Here, bringing it from an 83 to an 85 with 27 levels to go. Now, the one thing I'll say about Kante, lads, right, is uh, I don't think you can really train him as an attacking option, but his attacking skills are actually quite high, right? In the last video that I did, that I did preview in these, defensive midfielders, if you're playing them defensively, they need very high defensive stats to stay back because the game is so laser focused and very balanced towards defensive um, or offensive capabilities. You definitely need to, you know, boost that up a little bit, I think, if you want to have that defense, right? So that's why, even though you're going to be giving him blockers a player skill, this is the build that we've gone for, right? So we've gone two into passing, five into dribbling, six into dexterity, eight into lower body, three into aerial strength, and 11 into defending, right? The reason we've gone 11 into defending is because we want his aggression as high as possible. That's what we want. We want it to be over 95, okay? Because when it's over 95, you'll have a couple of different animations. You'll have a couple of different behaviors from the AI, especially for a DMF, especially for a box-to-box, -box, or especially for a destroyer or anchorman, right? So I will say also as well that with that, if you're using Ten Hag with this build as your manager, you're going to have 85 speed, which is beautiful for this card. 85 speed, 85 acceleration. If you're using just Pep or Klopp or Simeone or Valbuena, whatever you want to call him, you will have 84 speed, which is still fine. You're getting your balance, you're getting your stamina all above the 90, which is insane for a card like this. And of course, those defensive stats are ridiculous, right? On top of that, as you're going to have 80 tight possession, 80 ball control, 80 low pass and 85 dribbling. It's ridiculous, man. If you stick blocker on him, you're going to have one of the best uh, DMFs in the game or CMFs. I would definitely play him in a double pivot. Um, you know, if you're playing with a very attack heavy team, maybe a 3-5-2 with a holding uh, DMF and then obviously can't it to the left a little bit or to the right a little bit as another DMF that is just literally your chase artist. What I mean by that is that you're chasing the ball. You're not really too concerned about him holding his defensive shape as you are with Koulibaly, who we'll get to in a second, right? So the difference between defensive awareness and um, uh, for a CB and a DMF is very different, right? The defensive awareness and engagement of centre-backs needs to be very high, right? So Koulibaly probably gets the best, and I mean the best booster, which is defending plus two, and increase the defensive awareness, tackling, acceleration, and jumping. So straight away, you're kind of thinking that Koulibaly goes from a kind of a slow, lumbering, kind of like non-mobile centre-back to somebody that can literally do it all, right? He's got every player skill that you could possibly want, except acrobatic clearance, so I would definitely 100% give him that. I would also use Koulibaly as my main destroyer option beside somebody that is actually a little bit more slow, um, such as the Ligt or Van Dijk or somebody like that. Uh, Costa Corta maybe could come in there instead of Koulibaly or Jimenez. That's kind of the role I would go with um, if you wanted to go that route with him. But this is the build that I would go for him just to see this one out. I won't keep it too long, right? So we've gone for six uh, into dexterity, two into lower body, nine into aerial strength, 13 into defending, and one into goalkeeper one, right? That is going to give us this build here, right? Now, the reason why we've gone a little bit um, lower on the defensive skills here and we've gone for, you know, big on the aerial strength is that when the defenders, it's just automatically built into the game that you don't need to defend as much with your CB as your DMF. Your DMF, you're constantly switching to him. You're constantly on the middle of the pitch. You're constantly chasing back or else pushing forward. So with a center back, I mean, the center backs will stay back by default. You know what I mean? Unless you're gone fully all out attack, right? So once you have his defensive capabilities above the 90, especially defensive engagement, which we do have here, that is enough. Now we could go the extra sauce on this and get the aggression to 97 and then get the plus two and that would be 99. But to be honest with you, I would much rather have his speed and acceleration and physical contact up where they're at, right? The reason for the speed and the high speed stat, right, for 78, is you want to, when you're not controlling Koulibaly, you want him to be picking up spots and getting back into positions that you really aren't seeing or you aren't covering. Because the AI do a lot for you, especially in the center back area of the pitch, right? So... That is it for me, lads. I will be back later. Um, I will see you guys in a little bit. Hopefully, we do get one of these boys if we do spin. Let me know if you guys are going to spin or not. I think, look, it's a really nice Cristiano Ronaldo card. Koulibaly is an absolute beast, and Kante is a monster as well, especially if you are new to the game. I would say that this has been a good pack, right? Now, on the flip side, this these selections, right, it's all about perspective. I mean, these selections, you're going to be talking about whether Kante in my team does Kante, you know, take over from Vieira? Probably not. Does he take over from Barella? 
that is kind of the question I'd have to ask because Barella is my main kind of CMF box to box, right? Koulibaly, does he get in ahead of any of the centre backs I have in my squad at the moment, especially Puyol or somebody like Jimenez or somebody like that? Potentially, right? And then Ronaldo, does he get in ahead of, you know, Cantona? Does he get in, in ahead of the club pack Cristiano Ronaldo? It's all about perspective, man, as to where your team is at. But it is a very, very nice uh, selection, right? The rest of the players in the pack, we don't really need to focus too much on them. If you guys want to know anything about them, there aren't really anything to know, really. It's, they're, they're pretty poor selections, um, depending on where you are with your journey. But yeah, these are three good packs. Everyone likes a Ronaldo card. I hope we do get an endgame level Ronaldo card that is just like, yeah, this guy is the best. There's no weaknesses in him. Um, but Ronaldo's balance, uh, you know, Koulibaly, where he's at in the ecosystem at the moment of centre-backs is kind of, you know, he's just there, thereabouts, and Kante, um, is going to be kind of a choice because obviously Vieira is probably the chosen DMF for a lot of top tier players now. So that is it, lads. Again, for me, happy Christmas. Thank you guys for all the support during the year. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be back later on and uh, hope to see you then. Peace. Have a good one. Let me know if you spin or not.